no man, woman, they, kitty cat, purple people eater, whatever you want to be called, can remember all the information that is involved in home labbing. And this is why it's ultra important that you set up some type of documentation system in order to support your efforts as you move through a lot of these projects. I can tell you as someone that maybe doesn't have the best memory, developing a home labbing second brain is going to pay dividends in the future that you can't even imagine right now, especially if you're just one of these young Padawans. I've become more powerful than any Jedi. Even you. Much to learn, you still have. I don't care who you are, it's too much information. All the Linux commands, all the containers that you have to remember, all the different distro specific commands you have to remember. If you're getting into this game and you want to be well rounded, there is no way one brain can remember all this. So, my system is pretty easy. It breaks down into three different sections. First, we're going to have the research phase. Now, the research phase, I'm just going out and collecting a bunch of links. So I need a piece of software that can store those links, categorize those links, tag those links, and it needs to be searchable. Now during this research phase, this is kind of optional, but I use a diagramming piece of software. I'm a visual learner, so I like to put things up there, connect them, and kind of make a mind map or even a flow chart before I move into the following phase, which is the project phase. Now during this, you're just going to keep a lab notebook. Now you could use pen and paper, but I recommend you at least use something digital because this way you can move that information around. You don't have to type it in after you're writing it on your notebook. And no shame in your game if you use a notebook. I love notebooks, but I just find in my process, it's easier to keep it all digital. Now, along with that, you don't have to use all of these pieces of software that I'm using. I'm just giving you an example in a few minutes of my strategy and the software I use to support it. And you can plug in any of your preferred software. I'm not supported by or financed by or sponsored by any of these folks. And in fact, my lab notebook, for example, is something I custom built. But during the project, it serves type of two different purposes. One, it's going to give you a track of what you're doing. So if you mess up, uh, you can go back and look at your notes and say, oh, on this you know, third step, I must have missed maybe a dependency or something. So in project, it's going to be super valuable to you. And you should approach this like a scientist. Don't just write down one, two, three steps. Also write down some issues you may have found. You know, write down any types of observations. So really look at it like you're a scientist in a lab. That is the best way to explain it. After we do that and you finish the project, what you're going to do is take those notes and move it into our final phase or our debrief phase, I like to call it, where I'm distilling a lot of my data from my notes to make a true tutorial. One, two, three, four, five, six. The idea here is anyone, not just me, can go to where I store it in my own personal wiki and go to that wiki and say, cool, I need to know how to deploy this container, look at this tutorial and follow along. And you know that's the central source of truth. However, a lot of times you might run into an issue or you just want some more information on it. By using this system, I can roll back to my notes phase and look at all the notes with, you know, this can be very raw data, things scribbled in, however you're doing it, it doesn't matter, but that's going to give me a really good picture of what went on during that project. And then lastly, if I need to roll back one other step, I can go to my link management software and I can pull up all the source data that I used as reference for the project. So it's an end to end inclusive system that I think you should consider developing. And this is why I'm calling it my home labbing second brain. In our first phase, as I mentioned, I'm collecting a lot of links. And the first piece of the software I use is something that used to be called Hoarder, is now called CarKeep. One of the great things about CarKeep is it does have a Chrome extension. And if you click this just like you would, you know, your bookmark button, what it's going to do is go out and save the page, but also scan it with AI. Now you can use anything you want here. You can use your self-hosted Alama install, or you could use something like Open AI APIs. And you can see here, it went through, it scanned the document or the scanned the website, and it went ahead and placed these tags. Now this is all created by AI. I find it to be really good. I rarely have to add tags or delete tags. If I did, you can simply drop down here, you can create new ones, or you can use ones that you already have in the system. This is a huge time saver, folks. I used to have to do this manually, and it's just gonna give you a great way to organize. You can also add it to lists. Think of these just as, 
kind of like a folder. So I can add it to, you know, home labbing, for example. And then I'm done. If I hit bookmarks, that's going to take me into my self hosted car keep installation. And you can see it right here how to set up Raspberry Pi AI kit. Now, these are the tags that it's went ahead and placed via AI. If I want to see all of them, I can go in here and I can select edit. And when I go into edit, you can see the different tags and make any changes that you may need to here as well. If I go back, I can also hit this three buttons. I can favorite, I can archive it. I can download and archive in PDF form of this website. I can manage the lists. One of the great things here is I can add it to another list. So let's say I also want to put it in uh, Raspberry Pi. I can do that. You can add a whole bunch of links as, as, as much as you see fit. Then if I want to, I can archive that. And that's just going to move it out of like, let's say your inbox view or your main view, just to, so that, you know, it keeps it more organized. And once again, those tags are going to come from AI. And here's the powerful part. You can see all the tags that AI has produced for me. You know, if I want to do something, I can come in here and say, oh, what, what do I have on Raspberry Pi? I can hit those tags. Or if I went ahead and did the manual process and put them in these labels, I could also go over here and it'll show up here. And then lastly, I can also search anything that I need to. So this is a really good system because it's going to give you that automated organization via tags. And again, I used to have to put these in manually. It was a huge time sink. Or I can also file them in these labels or folders, for lack of a better term. I also use another piece of software here. This software is a diagram software. This is pretty optional depending on what I'm working on. But a lot of people ask me about this. I use this in a lot of my videos as well. This is called XCaliDraw. It's also self-hosted, very powerful. I use this not only for things like this. This was a thing I did for network topography, but I also use it for different problems they may be facing just to make a flow chart or decision tree or something like a mind map. This is something that just helps me as a visual learner. Once I get this all down, I move into my project phase. Now this is where I'm actually doing my projects. Um, let me go ahead and delete this because we're going to recreate this for purposes of the demonstration. But this again is something that I built. So I'm not self hosting this. That may be icky to some of you all. I used Firebase AI to build out this application because I wanted my notes or lab book to have some AI involved with it. That does mean that Google's hosting it. I know, sorry about that, uh, but it still is a wonderful piece of software. If you're interested, let me know. I'm happy to do a demo, or perhaps I can even open this up if you guys see any use to this, but it fits in quite nicely to how I want to work. So right here, I would just hit a new note. In this case, I'm gonna move from moving from hoarder which is what they used to call car keep to car keep and i have a simple little title there i can also put this in different you know categories that's similar to what we saw over there on car keep where this is just folders right right here actually you can make subfolders whatever you see fit right here and then you can just add them to them they're comma separated so you can add a bunch there i'm going to skip over the tags really quickly and i'm going to paste in some of my project notes here. And these are just those raw notes that you'll be taking. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. It doesn't have to be spelled right. Just make sure you're doing this in sequence as you follow through a project. Now stealing something or borrowing something from Car Keep, I used AI here and here I can just go over and click my AI and it's gonna sort, search through this and give me the tags. Again, those tags will show up down below here and they're searchable as well. So once I do that, I also included this beautify button and this beautify button uses AI just to make it look better and also put it in markdown. So it's easier for me to use this data when I distill it to put it into my final wiki. So let me show you an example of what it does here. It's just going to go through, clean it up, you know, correct any of the spelling mistakes. I'm not the best speller any of the grammar and it's just going to make it look really nice. So now we're ready to save it and you'll see it pops over to markdown. So if you know Markdown, really easy to use. I also have the ability to add extra notes here, or I can edit this note if I need to. I just like to have sometimes have a conversational view if I'm coming back later. Of course, all these things are uh, time stamped, so you'll be able to follow along. Now, the last thing I did here was included AI in the main page, because this way, if I have a bunch of notes on a particular subject, I can just ask questions against it. So I could say, how do I move to car keep? And if I do that, then it should bring up, you know, just a brief synopsis of my notes. So this is very powerful for me. Again, something I created. You can use anything you want. 
This is just that area that you're going to do that data dump while you're in a project. But if we go back and we look at my notes here for car keep, you know, it's organized pretty well, I would say, but I like to take it in a step further. So after the successful completion, I'll put it into my wiki. Now this is built on wiki.js. This is self-hosted as well. And here uh, it's just a more distilled, very professional looking uh, tutorial that most of the times I am hoping that even if you're not me, you could come in here being someone new or whatever, and you're just looking at this and, and you should be able to be successful. So here's an example, like setting up a cron job to automatically update my Raspberry Pis every day. Again, I'm just putting this in a little bit better of a format with code blocks. So expanding on that markdown a little bit, this is markdown as well. Uh, so if you know that language, you don't have to, you can also use their WYSIWYG if you want. You can add comments here, but you can see here a very professional looking final project debrief. So in this way, I truly am creating my home labbing second brain. And as I mentioned, it's really nice because you get that distilled view that anybody can follow, but you can always go back to all the different pieces of data that helped you get to that point. So it's a true end-to-end -end system that will save you a tremendous amount of time and frustration because I can tell you things will go wrong in a home lab and you will have to restore things. And when you do, or you're just you know developing a new system or putting in together another home lab or doing this on a professional level, you always wanna have that documentation to easily go back to, and then you can even get all the research that you did. I really do like this system. It's helped me tremendously well, throughout many, many years not only in my home labbing space, but I have a similar system for work. And I just keep these data sets in a couple different buckets. But all in all, the logic behind it and the way it flows from phase to phase to phase is all the same. So feel free to modify this. This is just an example, but make sure you are doing something, whether you're an old Jedi or one of these Padawans that are just now coming up, make sure you develop this habit right now. It will pay dividends in the future. I promise you take it for an old Unk Hill. And of course, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment. If you have an alternative system or some suggestions on software that other folks might want to use, please also leave those in the comments. Look, it helps us all out. That's what we're here for for the tribe, for the community. So anything that you have or want to share, please feel free to do so. Also, if this did provide any value for you whatsoever, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. It helps the channel out so much. I would greatly appreciate it. Anyways, my name's Hill Phantom, and I'll see you next time.